Hello students, this is Assistant Professor Mr. Sridhar Ayyar and I am currently working at the University of Mumbai. So as part of this video course on Digital Forensics, I am going to walk you through the entire processes involved in between the two most important things that is data acquisition and presenting it to the court of law. So we are going to understand the entire chain of custody involved over here. The very first step and the most crucial is finding out the probable sources of evidences. Once we narrow down on the possible sources of evidences, our very first task is to collect those evidences. That is what we call as data acquisition. And once we are satisfied that we have a good amount of evidences captured, we start analyzing those evidences. Fine. So the very first step is data acquisition. Then comes the next step that is data duplication. Now there is a very fine line between data acquisition and data duplication. Data duplication is nothing but it is the process in which we have already found out that so and so is my data evidence and I need to safeguard it by duplicating it. By this statement I simply mean that just to avoid any unnecessary damage to the evidence or any accidental damage to the evidence it is always recommended to keep a duplicate of that evidence stored somewhere else in a safe place. That is what we call as data duplication. So the very first step is data acquisition followed by data duplication if needed and then comes the next step that is forensic analysis. So in these coming sections we are going to discuss what exactly is data acquisition, what is data duplication followed by what is forensic analysis of those evidences. Once we are sure that these are the evidences that I need to capture these are the evidences that I need to analyze. We start making use of forensic tools. That is what we are going to learn in the next section. That is forensic tools in the form of few sophisticated operating systems such as Kali Linux or SIFT. We are going to learn not only from the theoretical standpoint, we are also going to learn from a hands-on point of view. That is, you are not only going to learn along with me theoretically, you are also going to learn how to implement it how to practice it on a real world application or some real world scenarios. So whenever we are asked to collect any evidences from the suspect's hard drive, what are the various tools that we can make use of in such a situation? We are going to learn about all that in detail in the upcoming sections. In the next section, we are going to learn in detail what exactly is wireless forensics. Nowadays, internet is the utmost important communication medium we are using right now, isn't it? So. Along with the advantages of internet, there are some drawbacks also. The internet is very prone to attacks and we are going to learn what are those attacks happening in and around in a wireless network and how to gather evidences from such an attack. So whenever such an attack happens, how can we capture the evidences which can make sure that so and so attack has happened on so and so target and what are the various attack vectors that are being used to launch that attack. Right? We are going to learn all about these in the next few sections. So moving towards the end, it's a dedicated section on Linux forensics. We are going to learn how we can capture evidences from a disk image using a Linux workstation called SIFT. And finally, we are going to learn how to analyze the evidences captured using various sophisticated tools which are readily available on the internet. So without wasting much time, let's get started. So let me walk you through this digital forensics roadmap, the various modules we are going to cover in the upcoming few videos. The first section is all about data. What exactly is data? What is evidence? And how we can capture the required evidence from two different perspectives. First, a static data acquisition. And second, live data acquisition. Static data acquisition is all about capturing crucial information or evidence from a computer hard disk or a hard drive. Whereas live data acquisition is all about the process in which we capture the evidence from a live computer. That is, you're actually present at the crime scene and you can't take away the RAM out of it. You can't take away the hard disk out of it and you need to capture the evidences from that live running machine itself. This is contrasting as compared to static data acquisition where you might be presented with an evidence drive or you might be asked to create a copy of that drive and carry it along with you. 
to your workstation and carry out all the analysis on that evidence captured. Whereas in live data acquisition, you have to be very careful because if you shut down the computer by mistake, you might end up losing all the crucial evidences from that computer system. Because whatever operations you perform on that live computer, they should not change the contents already present on that computer. So live data acquisition is all about capturing all the volatile information from that computer without changing anything on that computer. The tools might be overlapping. You might be using the same versions of the tools in the case of static acquisition as well as live data acquisition. But the way you perform them is different. Finally, in this module, we are going to learn what is data recovery. So once you have captured all the evidences from the various suspects hard drive or the suspects RAM using live data acquisition, finally you need to analyze the evidences. You need to find out the critical information present inside those evidences with the help of data recovery tools, for example, Foremost and Scalpel. In the case of static data acquisition, we are going to use tools such as FTK Imager in the case of Windows and DD in the case of Linux. So I'm going to focus on Windows as well as Linux. You will learn how to capture evidences from a Windows machine that is a static data acquisition using FTK Imager. Also, similarly, we are going to do the same thing with Linux using the tool Data Duplicator or DD. In the case of live data acquisition, I'm going to use the same tool FTK Imager for creating a RAM dump. RAM dump is basically all the data stored inside your RAM for a limited period of time. Once you switch off your computer, it is quite possible that majority of your data will vanish out of the RAM. So it is very important for you to capture crucial evidences from the RAM using the live status of that computer. You can't turn it off. You can't do some changes to the hard disk. You can't make any operations which could involve copying, deleting, etc, etc. Because that might change some signatures of the existing files on that suspect's hard drive. So that is very much important. So these are the topics which we are going to cover in this module. That is static data acquisition, live data acquisition and data recovery. So let's get started. So let's get started with the hands-on approach of data collection that is data acquisition and duplication. Let's first understand what is data acquisition and duplication and is there any difference? Can we use it interchangeably? Let's understand that first. Data acquisition is basically a collection of data. It could be an evidence or it could be any data, any piece of information which we uh, can assume to be as an evidence, which can later on prove to be as an evidence. Everything of that sort is considered to be under data acquisition. Whereas when we are certain that so much data is collected and we are not going to collect any more data after this, and if we want to protect that data from any further modifications, we would proceed with data duplication. Or let's take a scenario, we have access to a suspect's hard drive and we would like to collect data from it and store it so that in the future we don't end up messing up with that particular piece of information. So we would opt for data duplication methods. So in short, data acquisition is nothing but the process of collecting that data. It could be an evidence or any information of crucial importance to us. And whereas data duplication is making copies of that data so that we can protect it from further modifications. So we can say that both these methodologies go hand in hand with each other. Therefore, we can term it as data acquisition and duplication as a whole term. So let's start with the very first phase that is data acquisition from a static device. It could be a hard disk, it could be a pen drive, etc, etc. So to keep our examination short, we can assume that all the evidence is present inside a suspect's pen drive or thumb drive. We can use that pen drive as a source of evidence and move ahead in our investigation. So let's get started. So the first tool that we are going to learn is called as FTK Imager. This is a product by Access Data. What is the use of this product? Well, FTK Imager is a forensic tool using which you can actually capture an image of either a live system or a static system. So what are the advantages of this tool? First of all, uh, you get a free copy of this tool using which you can actually 
create forensically sound images which you can later on investigate using different tools uh, one of the tools which access data provides is called as forensic toolkit using which you can also analyze the evidences created by ftk imager more than that there are many such tools available which are majorly free tools using which you can go through the images captured through ftk imager so basically it creates a general format copy of the image which you can use on multi vendor different applications for analysis purpose so let's see how to download this tool first of all you need to go to google and type this over there that is ftk imager and the very first link will uh, redirect you to this particular site then you simply need to scroll down and you will get an option of downloading this ftk imager so click on it and you will see something like this once you click on download now you will be redirected to a form in my case i have already filled that form but how will it look in your case let me show it to you by opening it in an incognito window and this is how the form will look you need to fill in your details every field is compulsory every field is required you need to enter your first name last name your email id it can be a, it can be your work email id or it can be even your personal email id enter your phone number country select your country organization if you are a student simply you can type in student over there same goes with job title job function if you are working simply enter your designations over here just select what exactly suits your uh, profile and then type in the organization type if you are a student you can select education or student if you are a faculty teaching somewhere you can select education and then my organization is currently using ftk just check whether your organization is using ftk if it is using it kindly enter yes or if it is not using it you can select no and this is entirely up to you if you want some newsletters uh, daily uh, mailed at some regular intervals you can select yes or you can opt out of it and then press submit once you do it um, link will be shared on your email id you can go there click that link and you will be able to download the product after downloading it this is how the product looks like around 54.7 mb in size depending upon your uh, processor i'm using a 64 bit processor so this is the corresponding executable file for it so the installation is very simple simply double click on it press yes i'm currently using windows 10 so depending upon your uh, windows that you are currently using it might give a different interface press next i accept the terms press next and then select the path where you would like to install this i would like to install this in d drive and press ok press next click install it will take few seconds or few minutes depending upon your processor depending upon your computer which you are using and once this is done you will be presented with a simple looking interface simply click on finish and this is how the interface looks like so this is very much simple as compared to other sophisticated tools you have few limited options using which you will be able to create an image of a hard disk or you can even create an image from a live suspects uh, computer using the same tool so let me show you what exactly we are going to do next we are going to do two things first of all we are going to learn about what exactly is capturing a static evidence using ftk imager so the first thing is click on file and click on create disk image so now what you are doing is you are actually having an access to a hard disk let me give you two scenarios for example you are having the hard disk uh, removed from the suspects computer and you are having it right in front of you in your workstation forensic workstation then you can simply uh, create an image from that hard disk using this option and the second scenario is you are actually present at the crime scene and you would like to capture the evidences without removing the hard disk but this is slightly different from live evidence capturing live evidence capturing is nothing but capturing the volatile data over here you are capturing the evidence from the hard disk which is not volatile so what you can do is just imagine depending upon the scenarios you can take your call so right now i am just uh, following a scenario where i have reached the suspects uh, computer i have access to it and 
I can either uh, remove it physically and carry it to my workstation or I can take the uh, image then and there at the crime scene itself. So it depends ultimately on the situation. If you have a lot of time, you can sit at that particular crime scene and take out the evidences. Or if you are running short of time, you can simply carry the uh, hard disk physically, move to your forensic workstation and then you can create the disk image. So let's see how to capture evidences or in short capture data from the suspect's hard drive. It's very simple. You simply need to go to file and select this option create disk image. For static collection of evidences, we are going to select this option disk image and for live uh, data acquisition that is collecting data from the RAM, we are going to select this option capture memory. We are going to see this later. Uh, whenever we are going to start with live data acquisition for the time being let's stick to this create disk image once you click this you will get options such as physical drive logical drive image file contents of a folder and multiple devices for example cd dvd these are basically the source of evidence right now we are going to stick with physical drive physical drives are uh, usually the default uh, evidence sources from which you actually get a bit by bit copy that is uh, there will be very less chance of skipping any particular sector sk skipping any particular file or folder or any partition whereas in case of logical drive there will always be a risk of missing out on some part or some crucial evidence so it is always preferred to select the physical drive because it will create a bit by bit copy of the entire evidence structure so if you have ample amount of space in your destination drive then you can select this physical drive if you are uh, running short of space on the destination drive where you actually want to copy the evidences then you can select logical drive for our purpose we are going to stick with physical drive so select this press next and over here you will get the option to select the evidence drive in my case i am having a 512 gb ssd and a one terabyte hard disk apart from that the third drive which you can see over here, I am just uh, taking a scenario where the evidence is present in a pen drive, which is uh, 16 GB in space. So this particular 16 GB pen drive is my actual evidence drive. In real life scenarios, the evidence drive could be an actual hard disk or it could be even a pen drive. So the size will be obviously different. But in our case, to keep it simple, to keep it uh, well, uh, within time, I am just selecting a 16 GB pen drive. I am not having any lesser capacity pen drive, or I would have taken that because a 16 GB pen drive would approximately take uh, 40 to 50 minutes for the entire copying process to complete. Now, you would have one thing in mind why are we using this FTK imager to create a copy? We could easily copy uh, the pen drive and paste it in our destination drive. Well, there is always certain aspect of risk involved whenever we are copying something from one location to the other location. What happens is we can't be 100% sure that after copying one uh, evidence folder or one evidence drive from one location and pasting it to a different location, we won't end up deleting or we won't end up modifying the contents of the actual source evidence file. Whereas if we use this particular tool or any other imaging tools, we could be 100% sure that whatever evidence we are capturing from that source, it will be pasted in a forensically sound manner. So let me select the 16 GB USB drive, which according to our case study is our evidence file or evidence source. So let me select this and press finish. So in this window, we are actually going to select the destination drive where the actual evidence image will be stored. So let's select this particular image destination these are the formats in which you can store your image so raw or dd format is the default format in which most general forensic images are stored so we are going to select raw only and press next then it will ask you to enter some case numbers so right now as we are working on the very first case we can give it a number such as 001 Similarly, the evidence number as a single case can have multiple evidences. So let me select one as the very first evidence. 
unique description you can write any description about your evidence for example a pen drive let me be more precise a 16 gb pen drive full of evidences or something like that full of evidences examiner you can write your name and then any additional notes if you wish i would like to keep it blank and then press next now it will ask you for the folder where you would like to save this image select any folder which you would like let me go to a folder which is having enough space at this moment to store this so let me select this particular drive games and movies yeah i am having a lot of space over there so i can select that i have this folder created ftk major evidence okay go inside that and you can make a new folder for example case 001 and press okay now let's check the folder yeah this is this uh, this is the folder i have just now created now inside this you can create few more folders for example if i want to be more specific what sort of evidence is present over there i can create folders such as images i can create a folder such as documents for example okay and then i can select this particular folder itself as the destination folder so let me go back and do some changes go to the same folder and select images as your main folder where the evidence image can be captured now uh, image file name okay now you can give a file name to your image you can uh, write something like this evidence and then press finish so this will be the final image destination that is ftk major evidence k001 images evidence and then press start but before that let me go through all these options available over here you can add one more image destination if you wish for example if you uh, would like this image to be in e01 format aff format or smart format you can select that but i have actually selected raw only because raw is supported by almost all of the forensic investigation tools so we we are going to stick with raw itself and then you can select these options it is uh, selected by default that is verify images after they're created it will take a little time but what happens is it will also create a hash for the corresponding image hashes in the form of md5 or sha1 are created along with the evidence file itself so in case if you wish to uh, verify the contents of the evidence file later on you can simply verify them with the help of these hash files or hash values next pre-calculate progress statistics it is optional if you want you can select this but it will again add up to the time taken and finally create listing of all the files in the image that they are created after they are created again this is optional i i will keep them as it is and press start now it's going to take some time depending upon the size of your uh, source evidence source in my case it is 16 gb in size so it is going to take approximately uh, 40 to 50 minutes if you have a lesser sized evidence file then it will take obviously lesser amount of time so uh, without wasting much time i will keep it running in the background and we'll come back and check once it is done so as expected it has taken approximately 44 minutes to be precise it is still copying the files into the destination hard drive so let's have a look at how the destination hard drive actually looks like so this is how our destination hard drive looks like where are the where the evidence is being copied after acquiring it from the suspect's hard drive so as you can see there are these many parts 11 parts to be precise and each of these parts approximately consists of 1.4 gb or 1.5 gb to be precise so in total we have approximately 15 to 16 gb of evidence which is captured or acquired from this evidence drive or this pen drive so let's have a look at the various files which are present inside this evidence drive if i click on it i can see that there are total five image files let me open them one by one these are the image files present inside that evidence drive as you can see these are simple looking files 
बट यू नेवर नो दे मे बी सम फाइल्स ऑप्टेन आउट ऑफ सम स्टेग्नोग्राफी टेक्निक विच माइट हैव समथिंग हिडन बिहाइंड दम सो इन द मीन टाइम लेट्स चेक वेदर आवर कॉपिंग प्रोसेस इज कम्प्लीट और नॉट येस एज यू कैन सी द प्रोसेस इज कम्प्लीटेड दिस इज द समरी शीट लेट्स क्लोज इट Now let's get back to the destination drive and check the details of the entire process. If you click on this archived folder, archived file, you will come to know that uh, the entire eleven parts are combined together, and this is how the evidence file looks like. This ultimately depends upon the investigator who is going to investigate this particular file. He has to unzip it and then. Uh, load it into any forensic analysis tool and then they will be in a position to analyze all these evidences one by one next up we are having this text document let's click on it this text document will be basically the entire summary of your process it is created by access data ftk major and followed by the version number the case number 001 evidence number 1 the unique description which i had given during the earlier phase and the examiner name and so on towards the end you can see the information regarding the uh, drive geometry of your source evidence file or we can say source evidence drive the name of that drive uh, the capacity of that drive and the number of cylinders and tracks etc if i scroll down you can see the hashes computed the hash values in the form of md5 and sha1 will be really handy just to verify if there is any modification to the in, uh, evidence file before and after the process so that we can keep a track if any accidental modifications have occurred over there or not even a single change to the, one of the bits may cause a huge change in the uh, computed checksums or hash values which is what we call as the avalanche effect these are the list of the various evidences that we have captured 11 to be precise even if one of the evidence is lost then the entire uh, process will get distorted so in this section we came to know how to capture evidences or how to capture data or how to acquire data from a windows workstation with the help of this tool called as ftk imager in the next section we are going to discuss how to acquire similar static evidences from a workstation which is running on a linux os so stay tuned